Welcome to Mind and Society, a program devoted to the works and ideas of today's great thinkers, visionaries, and pathfinders. For this series, which we have labeled The Happiness Conspiracy, we are featuring the writings of John F. Schumacher, an internationally known clinical psychologist and social critic who has published 10 books on subjects dealing with culture, cross-cultural mental health, hypnosis and suggestibility, religion, self-deception, and most recently, the psychology and sociology of happiness. His books include The Age of Insanity, Wings of Illusion, The Corruption of Reality, and his most recent book, In Search of Happiness, Understanding an Endangered State of Mind. His new book takes a harsh look at the growing obsession with personal happiness in modern consumer culture while reframing the topic of happiness in much wider historical and social perspectives. Dr. Schumacher has kindly agreed to give a series of brief talks covering key points from In Search of Happiness, all of which will be available on YouTube. Here's Dr. John F. Schumacher. Einstein was one of humanity's great geniuses, but he had a blind spot. He couldn't see the all-importance of feeling happy. He once wrote, Happiness never appeared to me as an absolute aim. I am even inclined to compare such moral aims to the ambitions of a pig. He went on to say, The ideals that have guided my life are kindness, beauty, and truth. Today his words strike us as almost blasphemous because we become pigs at the happiness trough, unable to get enough of it. At every turn our how-to happiness books and articles, TV and radio programs, videos and websites, there are happiness camps, cruises, workshops and retreats, universities are adding courses in happiness studies and fast-growing professions include happiness counseling happiness coaching life lift coaching and joyology we're becoming a society of happy chondriacs but that's not a healthy trend no one is less able to sustain happiness than someone obsessed with feeling only happiness the capacity to be happy depends on being able to feel emotions other than happiness, including ones that compete with happiness. So-called negative emotions often help to forge life's deepest and most meaningful experiences. But the prospect of being real has never been more terrifying to people. Positiveness, even in the face of an apocalyptic nightmare, has become so fashionable that critics, pessimists, and realists are running for cover. Only the bravest are not being bullied into cheering up or at least shutting up. Without doubt, happiness has become the dominant illusion of the modern age. I never knew how measly my own happiness was until one day in 1978 when I found myself stranded in a remote village in western Tanzania. It was there that I saw real happiness for the first time. And since then, I've learned that happiness has vastly more to do with cultural factors than genetics, circumstances, or the trendy notion of personal choice. In some cultures, happiness is not even framed in terms of feeling good. For example, the native Navajos of the American Southwest regarded happiness as the attainment of universal beauty, or what they called hozo. Their counterpart of have a happy day was may you walk in beauty. How alien that sounds to people at the happiness trough today. We live in the age of depression, and in a culture that is highly toxic to happiness. Yet the irony is that almost everyone claims to be happy. When asked, even a high percentage of depressed people say they're happy. Of course, this begs the question, what do we actually mean by happiness, and how are we measuring it? The most common way of measuring happiness in today's society is by way of so-called life satisfaction. For example, the widely used life satisfaction scale. 
But this model flies in the face of historical wisdom about the need to limit satisfaction in order to lay the foundation for happiness. Salvador Dali once complained, There are days when I think I'm going to die from an overdose of satisfaction. My advice to you is if you want to be happy, whatever you do, don't get fully satisfied. Happiness is a way station between too little and too much, as Channing Pollock once wrote. The reason that it's so hard to speak of genuine happiness in Western consumer culture is that happiness has become equated with the consummation of desire. Being unsatisfied, which is by no means the same as being dissatisfied, is a much better formula for happiness. Another problem with viewing happiness in light of being satisfied concerns what is actually being satisfied. Consumer culture is designed to fill people with false needs while disconnecting them from essential human needs that are much more conducive to a lasting and worthwhile happiness. Tolstoy once said, If you want to be happy, be. But in a world ruled by having, it has become very difficult simply to be. The goal-oriented and self-serving approach to happiness peddled in today's consumer culture is not only misguided, it is tainted by many of the same elements that have given rise to depression and our worsening mental health crisis. When author John Updike warned that America is a vast conspiracy to make you happy, in his famous short story, How to Love America and Leave It at the Same Time, he was referring to the superficial mass happiness that prevails when economics successfully conspires to define our existence. I profit, therefore I am. To be happy, gulp something. Pay later. Novelist J.D. Salinger was so unnerved by the happiness conspiracy that he proclaimed, I'm a kind of paranoiac in reverse. I suspect people are plotting to make one happy. To understand what it means to be happy and to be fully alive, we need to take a look backwards. In the next segment, I'll talk about prehistoric happiness and some of the things that cognitive archaeologists are discovering about the endangered species known as happiness. In the meantime, beware that there are powerful forces out there conspiring to make you happy, but in all the wrong ways. Thanks once again for visiting Mind and Society. 